Mixing with Mike Mixing tip, uh, printing stems and submixes. Uh, quite often I think there's a lot of confusion about um, how to manage and deal with printing out the mix. And uh, well, this is not a completed mix, we'll get an idea here from this basic example of um, how printing a stem or a mix will work. The first thing that starts that you start with with all of these things is working within uh, the three-tier mix structure. And this will help to make printing stems and mixes work really well and efficiently. So what does that mean? What is the three-tier mix structure? The three-tier mix structure means that when you are organizing your tracks, you're basically organizing them into different sections. So over here on the left, I have what I call, uh, this is going to be my master fader, right? So this is going to be the master fader. And then I'm going to have a series of stem masters. And those stem masters are going to be drums, uh, in this case, uh, guitars and keys. Um, I have uh, lead vocals and I have a separate stem fader that is background vocals. So the idea is that these are the stem mixes that I'm going to want to print out in the end. So if I print out um, uh, my stereo mix, that'll go through the master fader. If I want to do um, a, uh, for example, just an instrumental version, I mute the lead vocals and the background stem and then I only hear drums and guitars. Now, where it gets a little bit tricky is in the signal flow of the individual faders. Because if I have a series of drum faders, and let's just say that I have these uh, five drum tracks, um, and then I also have some effects channels. Okay, so if I, if I were to you know, pick another color here, and these are my effects channels for drums, when I route these out, I'm very careful to make sure that these guys um, all together right, including those um, um, effects channels get routed into the stem. Okay, so these effects channels are not used by any other instrument or guitars. So now, for example, if I have guitar tracks, and, and now I have, for example, these five guitar tracks, and then I have more effects that are specific to those guitars, then um, what I can do here, and you like the color coding, this is all kind of good, um, those go together and they get routed into the guitar stem. Same with the vocals. So the guitar parts never share the effects. It could be the identical room effect or reverb effect or delay effect um, that the vocal has and the guitar has, but they are isolated in that they're on a separate aux return, separate send, and a separate return, which feeds into only the guitars. So when I actually go to print the final mix, there's several things that I want to be doing here, okay? So when I when I uh, first put it out here, I'm going to have my stereo mix. There's music in your voice. That'll be printing out, okay? Now, if I want to print an instrumental, all I need to do is just put this in here, and now I only have guitars and drums, okay? And this is that's my instrumental mix. So when I bounce it out, I may have a fade in or a fade out or something that's programmed in on the master fader. So when I print, and I also have processing, right? So I have stem processing with compressors here, and I have a mix bus compressor. And in this case, just a little L2. Um, you know, normally I would print without that type of thing, limiting. But just I'll leave it on just for the audio example here, just to kind of show you what's going on. Um, so the idea is that if I now want to print out stems for the mix, and this is really critical, right, when I bounce it out, because normally when I bounce out my stereo mix, I have all my stems open, all the tracks open that are associated, you know, that are, are meant to be played back. And I print that mix as normal through the master fader with any fade ins and fade outs. Okay, pretty straightforward with my compression. Usually, if I print a stereo, uh, an instrumental mix, I will also run that through the stereo. But when I print stems, I'm going to do it independently. I'm actually, what I'm going to do when I print the stem is I'm going to bypass my master fader. And not only am I going to bypass any plugins on my master fader, I'm also going to turn off any automation. So I'm going to set my fader at zero, and I'm going to print no automation, no fade out on the stems. So why why would you do that? And that's that's kind of the, the question that a lot of people come to me with. And the reason is, the reason why you have the stems is you want the flexibility to be able to remix these components. So if these components now have that fade in, the person looking at those stems cannot do their own fade, right? And they may be programming something completely different. They may be doing a remix where they don't want that fade in there. They don't want that processing. They just want the stereo mix. In film use, this is really important as well, because in a film, they can actually take those stems and they can turn it into an instrumental, into an acapella vocal, into a um, uh, drum appella version, right? Only drums. 
um, whatever it is that they want, any variation, and they can program their own fade-ins and fade-outs, etc. So if they bring these four stems up to zero that you print, then they should have the identical mix, and then you could feed that into the same bus processing if you wanted to, turn on the actual um, automation so that the fade-ins and fade-outs or anything of that sort also get fed in, and you can reprint the mix, and it should technically be identical. If you run all this through the stereo bus processing and everything, then when you stack them up next to each other, it won't be identical. And part of the reason for that is that the drums are primarily what's going to drive most of the compression in on a track. So if we have the drums feeding in, it's going to hit the compressor in a certain way. And with everything else in there, it's that bus compressor is going to act a certain way. But if I'm only feeding a cappella vocals, this is not nearly going to compress as much. And you're not going to get the pumping and breathing movement of the compression really making this drive when you print the a cappella version. So they're not going to be identical. Okay. And then if you do it that way, then you get into all kinds of sophisticated side chaining of, of getting everything to go through pre-fader. So you're getting all that pumping movement and then it just kind of gets to be crazy. It's much easier to print the stems independently. So now if I want to print my drum stem, I do a bounce to mix. And uh, when I bounce to mix, I've bypassed my automation. I'm going to bypass all my plugins here and I'll just go straight to the shortcut. Um, and then I'm going to make my bounce source. I could also set my bounce source to be the bus. Okay, so I could, if my stem is bus 1 and 2, I could set my bounce source to be bus 1 and 2. And then that's what the output mix would be. And then I want to print it at the same sample rate and bit depth as the session is. Okay, so I'm not going to dither it down to 16-bit. I'm going to leave it all at 24-bit, 44-1, or 88-2, or whatever the sample rate of the session happens to be. When I go to print the next version, I do the same thing. And I print everything from the very beginning of the session all the way out to the end until the last bit of audio. So the idea is that if I stack all these up at the beginning of a brand new session, then everything is going to line up perfectly. Okay, very important. Now, I am always going to keep my stem processing in, okay, for this, because that I've worked on that sound and all the effects and everything are keyed in there, and that's part of the whole vibe and the overall sound. The only thing that I'm leaving out in printing the stems is the master fader and the activity there. And that gives me the ability in a mastering process to go and remaster it without any of the stereo bus processing. So it leaves a lot of options open, whereas if you print everything through the stereo mix bus when you print your stems out, then not only are you getting different sounds, um, but you're affecting things in a way that they won't blend back together exactly the same way. So that's um, the basics of uh, how to print um, uh, mix stems and uh, submixes. So when I say stems and submixes, they're basically uh, the same idea or the same thing. Sometimes in um, printing mixes, um, there are, are things like vocal up versions and vocal down versions and things like that, or uh, guitar solo instead of sax solo, or, or you know the guitar solo up a dB, and those get printed as like a normal final mix. So there's nothing different about that. Um, where you get into stems and submixes, now you're talking about isolating groupings of instruments. And that, so you have to be very careful, make sure your edits are clean, especially on vocals, because when you do those a cappella versions, all that bleed in the headphones in between that you don't hear in the full mix with all the instruments comes blaring through <laughs> like crazy. So make sure you clean up your tracks uh, with your edits and stuff like that. And uh, um, there you go. There's your uh, Mixing with Mike mixing tip on printing stems and submixes.